Hello, I'm Dale from Gecko Board, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a TV dashboard. What equipment you need, what software you need, and some other important advice to keep in mind. Now you may have seen dashboards used in other people's offices, other people's warehouses, and thought, hey, that's exactly what we want in our business. And you would be onto something because a TV dashboard can have a powerful effect on a workspace. Not only does it keep data completely accessible so that your team can see when things have changed, it also keeps everybody orientated and motivated around KPIs. This dashboard can become part of the feedback loop of everyday conversations, everyday decision making. So today we're going to show you how to set up your own TV dashboard. To set up your own TV dashboard, you'll need three things. Dashboard software optimized for TV display, a TV and a computer device, including a mouse, a keyboard and a HDMI lead. First, let's talk about dashboard software. Now, there are many dashboard tools out there that will take your data and visualize it in the form of a live KPI dashboard. However, if you're setting up a TV dashboard, you need to make sure that your dashboard software is also optimized for TV display. That means your dashboard can be displayed cleanly in full screen. Your dashboard presents the information you need without having to click on anything or interact with it. It refreshes your data regularly and automatically. It can be understood at a distance. It can be displayed indefinitely, meaning you won't be timed out or logged out of your session if you leave it for too long. And it can be updated remotely, making your life easier if you ever need to edit your dashboard. Today, we're gonna to be using Gecko Board as our dashboard software. Not only does it connect with all the data sources I need, it's also brilliantly optimized for TV display. Two, a TV. Basically, any HD TV will work. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just make sure you can position it where you want to and that it's big enough to be read from a distance. You could also use a computer monitor, but they tend to be smaller and more expensive. Number three, a computer to power your dashboard. Now, most modern computers are going to work. You can use a PC, you can use a laptop. Just bear in mind that larger devices are harder to store with the TV itself. So you might consider using a smaller device like a mini PC, a Raspberry Pi, or a PC stick. Today, I'm gonna to be using this PC stick. It costs me about 150 to $200, and it is super easy to store with the TV itself. Whichever device you're using, just check that it can run your dashboard software. In the case of Gecko Board, which is browser-based, that just means your computer needs to be able to run a modern, up-to-date browser like Firefox or Chrome. Make sure that it supports full screen mode, that it has a HDMI output or something similar to connect to your screen, that it has at least a gigabyte of RAM, and that it can connect to Wi-Fi. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do I need a computer at all? Why can't I just use a smart TV? I use my smart TV to watch Netflix. Why can't I use it to power my dashboard? The problem with smart TVs is that the internet browsers tend to be underpowered. This creates rendering issues. They don't always display full screen, leaving you with ugly navigation bars and cursors. Plus, they don't store cookies often, meaning your dashboard doesn't stay logged in. This means you need to essentially reconfigure your TV every time you switch on your device. Okay, so now we've got everything we need, let's build our dashboard. So here we are in Gecko Board. This is the software we're going to be using to create our dashboard today. To get started, we just need to sign up for a free trial. So Gecko Board is very user friendly. You just need to connect the data sources you wish to see, whether that's Google Analytics, Zendesk, Salesforce, spreadsheets, or many more. Then we build widgets which visualize our key metrics. So let's say on my dashboard, I want to visualize the number of users of my website that week. So all I need to do is click on Google Analytics, select the widget I want to build, so users this week, and then sign in with Google to connect my Google Analytics account. So as you can see, now that I've connected my Google Analytics account, it's taken me through to this widget builder where I can add my first data visualization to my dashboard. So if I want to show a different metric, I can select the metric I want to see here in the display. If I want to change the type of visualization, perhaps I wanted to show a gauge or perhaps a bar chart, I would be able to do that here. I'm going to leave that as number, and I can also change the time frame as well, from this week to today to the past 30 days, so on and so forth. 
I can also add some valuable visual context to this. So let's say, for example, I wanted to compare this to the amount of website users we had last week. I can add a comparison. Um, or I could set a goal. So say our goal for the number of website users we want to see is 20,000. I can add that goal here and it will add it to my widget. So once I'm happy with my widget, I can add it to my dashboard. And as you can see here, we have our first visualization, which we can label. If I want, I can resize this widget or move it around the dashboard. When I'm happy with my widget, I can add another one. So let's say this time I want to add some data from Google Sheets. Um, all I just need to do is connect my Google Drive or even link directly to the Google Sheets. Once I've connected my Google Drive, um, all I need to do is just search for my spreadsheet. Now let's say I wanted to visualize my sales from this week and last week. I just select the appropriate part of my spreadsheet. I click, click visualization. I choose the visualization type that's most appropriate, a line chart perhaps, and then I can go ahead and add that to my dashboard as well. Now if I wanted to, I could group these two uh, visualization types by putting them in a group. Um, obviously, these are visualizing different things, so I don't think I would want to do that necessarily. One is visualizing sales metrics. The other is visualizing website metrics. Now, I'm not going to build up this entire dashboard in this video. Uh, we have some other videos on the channels you can take a look at to see how to build you know, the perfect dashboard. Um, but for now, I'm just going to come back in a few minutes when I've built up this dashboard so we can continue with the tutorial. Okay, so here we have our completed dashboard. As you can see, we're visualizing data from lots of different sources, from LinkedIn, from Twitter, from Google Analytics, from Salesforce, from Google Sheets, uh, from Zendesk, from all kinds of different places. I've built this dashboard really to show you just how diverse Gecko Board can be in getting your data into an easy to understand format. So we're gonna leave Gecko Board for now. We're gonna come back to it a little bit later because now it's time to set up our hardware. So this is my PC stick. It runs on Windows, it's nice and compact. And before we set this up on our main TV screen, we're just gonna set this up to run in kiosk mode. Now kiosk mode is gonna configure this device so that it always opens up on the same application every time it's turned on. That means every time you turn on this device, it's gonna open up on your dashboard, meaning you don't have to set it up every time you turn on your TV or boot up your device. Okay, so I've logged in as an administrator and I've connected to Wi-Fi. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to the Gecko Board Help Center to this article, which I'll leave the link to in the description, and click on this link to download some VBS script from the Gecko Board Help Center. Now, if you don't have Chrome installed already, it's going to do that automatically. As you can see, it's asking my permission to download this VBS file. Just click yes and click enter to start the process. So do I want this user to automatically log in each time the device is booted? Enter Y for yes, I do. Then just simply follow the steps and press any key when you're ready. Now it's gonna to go to this user account section. So what you want to do here is go to the checkbox which says users must enter a username and password to use this computer and uncheck that box. What that effectively means is that your device is gonna log in automatically every time you turn it on, which is much more user friendly for using your TV dashboard, especially if this device is purely used as a TV dashboard device. Now, some versions of Windows 10 don't have this checkbox here um, as an option to enable passwordless login. If you don't have this checkbox available, then there is an extra step which you'll need to complete, which I'll take you through now. What you're going to need to do is go to your start menu, type run, type in reg edit, and click OK. That's going to take you to the registry editor. Then you just need to type in this address in the registry editor. I will leave a link to all of this information in the description, so don't worry about noting this down. Then you need to go to device passwordless build version. Double click on that and make sure that the value data is zero. You're then going to need to reboot your machine and start the VBS script process again. And once you reach this step, this time, you should find that that users must enter a username and password to use this computer checkbox option is there. Okay, let's continue. Uh, so once you've got that unchecked, uh, just go ahead and click apply and then click okay. Now it might ask you to enter your admin password once you've hit apply. So just go ahead and enter your password and confirm it. 
And once you've done that, just click OK and then restart your computer. So now when your device boots up, it should automatically log in and open up this web page on Chrome. Now using a different device, I'm gonna log back into Gecko Board and select Send to TV. There, I just need to type in the passcode and hey presto, the device is paired. Now you just need to connect your device with HDMI lead to any TV where you want to display your dashboard. When it comes to positioning your TV dashboard, think carefully about who needs to see it and how easy it will be to read from where they work. To edit your dashboard, just log into Gecko Board from a different device. Or if you want, you can create a loop of dashboards, which is perfect for displaying multiple dashboards on the same TV screen. And there we go, we've set up our TV dashboard and it could not have been easier. If you found this video useful, please do give us a like and subscribe. Any questions, just go ahead and leave those in comments. Uh, we've got a text version of this guide. I'll leave a link to that article in the description. And if you wanna check out Gecko Board, just head over to geckoboard.com and start your free trial today. Have a great day, everybody.